Good evening. I wrap Stein, and here we are with your metal market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Monday. We're at the 7th of August, 2023, and the time, 6.20 p.m. Central Time. So we're getting a little bit of a reprieve bounce in the gold. You know, what we saw today was more of the same. They tried to rally the dollar index. It slipped back, closed with very minor gains, basically unchanged. Gold had a pretty reasonable range, but under pressure most of the day. Bonds, uh, I'm sorry, stock indices getting a bit of a rally. And my mind are what interest rates are doing and bonds and notes continue to add yield. And that's the important thing. And I don't think that's an accident. You know, we know the Treasury is this quarter alone going for a billion dollars in yield. So as they keep doing their announcements of the auctions and they tell you what they're going to do in the amounts in order to entice buyers, they have to give you a reasonable yield or one that uh, they want to sell it, entice it enough to get you to loosen up your purse strings. And that's basically what I think has been going on. On the energy market, uh, you get corrections, but not deep ones so far. And that's because supply is off the market. You know, I think we have to understand that the driving season is coming to an end. We want to focus now on natural gas and heating oil more than we do on gasoline. So just keep that in the back of your mind. When I look at the gold market, you've stayed underneath the 18-day average of closes. The pattern is still one when we look at it of lower highs lower lows, which is bearish. The market did as we talked about last week. It made a run first for the 100, I'm sorry, 200 day average of closes. I didn't see it was gray. 200 day average. It held it for a first bounce along with the Bollinger Band. When I see that combination come together, you know that I'm going to be telling you that's where the pros are going to cover shorts. That doesn't mean you might not want to sell it, but I'm going to repeat. When I have an oversold condition, the market gets down there, I don't see number one why one would deploy new money to get short in an oversold market. And if you are short, why are you hanging around? You just got oversold. In the gold-silver ratio, ever since the market stepped back over this red line, silver's been losing the gold. And you can see that, no bounce. Gold gave you a bounce, no bounce here. And the market just running at that uh, Gorilla Glue type trade. It hit the Bollinger Band and each day it's just riding it now and pushing it lower and lower. That's a very bearish situation. But again, without the market being embedded, very difficult to join in on the short side. In the copper market, uh, again, I didn't understand this whole rally because China's not done anything but a lot of talk. They have not done the walk. They haven't said anything yet to say how the property market's going to be improved, what's going to go on. Here's what they say. We're going to do something to make it better. What's that about? Uh, we're going to cut interest rates 10 basis points. You honestly think that's going to motivate anybody to do anything? Oh, you can go out and buy a house now and we will treat it in the big cities as tier one. So even if you had a mortgage, you can again come in, put 40% down, and we'll give you a mortgage. Does that sound like it's going to spur you on? They have a serious issue. And, you know, we get enamored because they're China, they're so big. Folks, they got a big problem. And it's one we don't want. Let them deal with it. In the platinum market, lower highs, lower lows, very oversold. But I'm going to repeat, every time they build another electric car, and there's plenty of them being built, you don't need platinum and palladium for the catalytic converter. That's very important. This isn't going away anytime soon. This is going to keep going, and you're going to do less and less demand because each time, let's assume that electric cars make up 8%, 10%, whatever the production number is. When it goes to 12, that's another 2% you're losing for the demand here. 15, 20, it just keeps going on. Does that make sense? Treat it that way. In the dollar index, there's a huge battle now at the 100-day average. Is the market embedded? Let's take a look. Both numbers are not over 80. The answer is no. So I have an overbought market, that's first thing, because of where the stochastics are, that is in an uptrend, that has hit its objective, the upper Bollinger Band, fallen back to the 100-day uh, average, trying to hold it, and if it gets underneath Friday's lows, could easily slip back into the 18-day average and try to figure out what to do next. 
I don't see a play that's very exciting in there. And I think that's what's going on in the futures market right now. Some of this stuff's just not so exciting, but I want to make it that way. So, you know, I do special reports and this time they're on indices on the move. I cover all the major stock indices that have futures. I give you from August 4th what I think they'll do right into the December time frame. Why? where the seasonal charts are. I break them into 20 to 27 year patterns, then a 15 year pattern, then a five year pattern to bring you all the way through, taking into account the pandemic, what it might do, where it impacted things, it's all there. To see it, all you have to do is move your cursor to the very top up here. You'll see an icon, click it, it'll take you right where you have to go. If you're not gonna be, able, if you can't do it that way, go to our website, irapstein.com, and under the word research, click on the top right, you'll see that it'll fall in there, give it a click and enjoy the report. It goes off on Wednesday, so it won't be available to you after Wednesday, got that? Better look at it now, you only have, when I put them up, you have three business days, that's it. Have a good day.